In September 1939, Germany invaded Poland in what the Germans called the September Campaign and the Poles called the Defensive War. Polish resistance held out for some 35 days, but in the end the country was subjugated and occupied. Polish citizens suffered greatly during the occupation. Most historians agree that the Poles suffered between 5 and 6 million casualties. Many of those were sent to camps, like the infamous Auschwitz. In June 1942, four prisoners made a brazen escape from that camp. It is history that deserves to be remembered. Kazimierz Piekowski joined the Polish Boy Scouts in 1929, when he was 10 years old. The partition of Poland had ended in 1918 with the revival of an independent Polish state. The Polish scouting movement emphasized nationalism and patriotism for the newly reconstituted state, which had to fight a series of wars to establish its borders. In 2011, Piekowski told the newspaper The Guardian that, I joined because I was patriotic, and when I arrived home, my mother was crying a little bit and said to me, I'm so happy you're on the right way. But the German occupiers didn't like the Polish Boy Scouts, as a 2017 obituary of Piekowski in the Washington Post noted. German forces swept through Poland and became killing priests, intellectuals, and members of the country's scouting organization in September 1939, fearing, correctly, that the scouts would help form the seeds of the country's underground resistance. Piekowski was quoted in The Guardian. Four days after Germany declared war, they arrived in Tchev. They started shooting the scouts. Piekowski had little choice but to flee, as a 2012 article on the webpage Jalopnik explains. Rounding up scouts and shooting them in the street was common practice when the Germans occupied Poland in 1939. So then 19-year-old Piekowski decided to make a break for it and flee to France. Piekowski attempted to escape through Hungary, but was caught at a border crossing, held as a political prisoner under the accusation that he had tried to join Polish military organizations abroad. He was transferred from prison to prison until on June 20th, 1940, he was one of the earliest sets of prisoners to be sent to Auschwitz, concentration camp. One of the camp's earliest inmates, the Washington Post explains that under the threat of death, Piekowski took on a new job, working more than 12 hours a day to expand the forced labor camp into the core of an elaborate killing center. He was assigned inmate number 918. Eugenius Banderas was a Ukrainian auto mechanic. Arrested as a political prisoner in January of 1941, he was sent to Auschwitz, where he worked in the car workshops for the SS guards. He was assigned prisoner number 8052. Stanislaw Gustav Yaster had also been a Polish scout and had participated in the defense of Warsaw. His family joined the Polish underground, but he was captured in a large roundup by the Germans in September 1940. In November 1940, he was moved to Auschwitz, where he worked in an SS warehouse and joined an underground movement established by former members of the Polish military called the Military Organization Union. He was assigned prisoner number 6438. Josef Lempart was a Catholic priest. The Catholic Church in Poland was brutally suppressed during the occupation. Limpart was one of the approximately 80% of Polish Catholic clergy who were sent to concentration camps. He was sent to Auschwitz and assigned prisoner number 3419. Life in Auschwitz was brutal, as the Guardian notes. Today, the starvation, unimaginable brutality, and physical labor that made the concentration camp a living hell are well documented. But the details of Piekowski's memories still have the power to shock. Prisoners were beaten or starved to death. The newspaper explains that guards would trick prisoners, stealing and throwing their hat, and then shooting them as they went to retrieve it. The guard would claim the prisoner had tried to escape, and would be given a three-day leave for foiling the attempt. Still, the Fordman did not really consider attempting to escape. A 2019 article on the website Drive Tribe wrote that the camp was very well guarded, had electrified barbed wire and watchtowers every few hundred meters. Life in Auschwitz was horrifying, but escaping, the two men figured, was nowhere near possible. In 2007, the Polish newspaper Guest wrote, Most of the prisoners who tried to escape from Auschwitz failed. It was enough that one person was missing during the morning roll call. The SS men began their search with the help of specially trained dogs. While there had been a handful of escapes from the camp, the Auschwitz Birkenau Memorial and Museum notes that most prisoner escapes took place from work sites outside the camp. But the Guardian notes, Piekowski and others were in the central camp. The escapees would have to make it through the infamous main gate, and also break out of the outer perimeter of the complex. And the risk was not just the difficulty in escape. The Guardian continues. But holding him back were the consequences for other prisoners. In the speech the deputy commandant gave when a new transport came in, he would say, If anyone thinks of doing something stupid like escaping, let them know this. We will kill ten people for each person who escapes from a work group or housing block. Piekowski said, It was like a cup of cold water hurled over my head. 
But all that changed in June of 1942. Prisoners who could speak German were sometimes employed in the camp offices, and one of those prisoners is seen that Bandera's name was on a list of prisoners who were to be executed. He was only being kept alive while he finished repairs on several cars. Desperate, he turned to his friend, Piekowski. A 2019 article on the Polish news site Poland Inn quoted Piekowski, I knew that escaping the central camp was absolutely impossible, and I didn't want to talk about it with him. He bothered me for three days. He knew I knew German. In the end, I agreed. The two had some advantages. Working in the camp garage, Mandera had access to a car and even was allowed to test drive cars around the camp. Moreover, as Scouting Magazine explained in 2018, Piekowski was assigned to work in a storehouse across the street from the camp. It was there he noticed a room that stored SS uniforms and weapons. But there was still the threat that if they succeeded, ten prisoners from their work group would be starved to death for each of them that escaped. The plan was to create a fictional work unit that could all escape together. The Washington Post reported that if the entire unit disappeared, Mr. Piekowski figured, their block supervisor would probably be held wholly responsible. But a work group required at least four people, so the two recruited Lampart and Yaster. The four planned their move on June 20th, 1942, exactly two years to the day after Piekowski had arrived at the camp. Piekowski was quoted in Guest. I wanted it to be Saturday afternoon, because SS men were leaving for the weekend and leaving only strictly appointed guards. The Guardian reports that the group met the morning of the plan and prayed together, and agreed that if the attempt failed, they would shoot themselves. Piekowski was quoted, What was really encouraging us and pushing us on was that if we did not do this, Eugenia's would be killed. Until the last moment, we weren't sure, but we said, We have to do this. We have to believe. That morning at work, Piekowski had unscrewed a bolt on a coal chute, allowing access to the chute. The four stole a trash cart from the camp's kitchen and told the guard they were on a work detail unloading trash. The guard didn't check to see if they were on a register and simply waved them through. Bandera went to retrieve a car using a copied key. They knew that pursuit might come quickly and they needed a fast car. The website Drive Tribe explains Bandera's choice of car. Once there, he looked around and picked the fastest car he could see, a 55 BHT Steer 220 limousine. Powered by a 2.3 liter, six cylinder inline engine, paired with a four speed manual gearbox, belonging to Camp Commandant Rudolf Hess. The guard quotes Piekowski It had to be fast because he had to be able to get to Berlin in a few hours. We took it because if we were chased, we had to be able to get away. Meanwhile, Piekowski, Limpert, and Yaster crawled through the coal chute and gained access to the room that included SS uniforms and weapons. They armed themselves with four machine guns and eight grenades. They changed into SS officer uniforms and met Bandera. By some accounts, Bandera also changed, but by others he was dressed as a prisoner in chains. The daring plan was working. They were going through the main gate in guards' uniforms in the Commandant's car. The hope was that the guards at the gate would open the gate as soon as they saw the car, but they didn't. As they approached the gate, it remained closed. The Guardian continues, Bandera stopped the car, and as Piekowski stared blankly ahead, not knowing what to do, he felt a blow on his shoulder. It was Limpart. He whispered, Kazik! Do something. The Washington Post recounts what happened next. The only one of the four who spoke German, Piekowski dressed as a second lieutenant, opened the door of the car and shouted, Wake up, you buggers! Open up or I'll open you up! Jalopnik continues, Terrified, the guard scrambled to raise the barrier, along the powerful motor to pass through, and drive away. The four had made their brazen escape. They avoided main roads, used forest roads, and abandoned the car some 60 kilometers from the camp. According to the Auschwitz Memorial Facebook page, after the successful escape, they sent the camp commandant a letter, ironically asking forgiveness for stealing the car from him. The camp guards were, of course, furious. The Guardian quoted Piekowski. When the commandant heard in Berlin that four prisoners had escaped, he asked, How the bloody hell could they escape in my own car, in our own uniforms, and with our ammunition? They could not believe that people they didn't think had any intelligence took them for a ride. But the escape was not without cost. In retaliation, Yaster's parents and Limpert's mother were interned at Auschwitz, where they died. Guests reported that the Germans established a special commission, and after long interrogations, it was concluded that the fugitives might have been helped by a German Kepo, meaning a prisoner supervisor. His name was Kurt Pachala. He was sentenced to death and locked in a starvation cell. He died six months later. Josef Limpart became ill during the escape. He was left at a monastery. He survived the war, left the priesthood, and married. He died in an accident in 1947. Eugenia's Benderas, who planned the escape and for whom we have no photograph, went back to Ukraine, survived the war. His fate is uncertain, but he died sometime after 1970. 
Stanislaw Yoster carried a report about the camp from resistance leader Witold Pilecki to the resistance group called the Polish Home Army. He continued to fight with the Home Army. His fate is a matter of controversy. A 1967 book claimed that Yoster was later accused of collaborating with the Germans and executed by the Home Army, but the book has since been discredited. It's unclear whether he was killed by the Home Army or by the Gestapo after having been rearrested in 1943. His friend Piekowski always stood by him and denied that he could have collaborated with the enemy. Piekowski himself made his way to Ukraine, but then returned to Poland and also served with the Home Army. A 2010 paper published in the journal Shofar noted that after communist consolidated power in Poland, the government denounced the Home Army for still having loyalty to the Polish government in exile. Many former members were arrested and some executed. For his role, Piekowski was sentenced to 10 years in prison, serving seven. He later studied to be an engineer and worked at the Gdansk shipyard. After the fall of communism in Poland, Piekowski spent years traveling the world with his wife and talking to youth groups about the Holocaust. He passed away in 2017 at the age of 98. According to the Auschwitz-Birkenau Memorial and Museum, it's been established that 928 prisoners attempted to escape from the Auschwitz complex in its four years and eight months of operation. 196 are known to have succeeded, although the fate of some others is unknown. The extraordinary escape of Piekowski, Bandera, Limpert, and Jasper had, however, a unique repercussion. As a result of their escape, prisoners were tattooed with their prison number as a means of making escape more difficult. Although some accounts claim that the practice was initiated because it was difficult to identify corpses after the clothes had been removed. Only prisoners at the Auschwitz-Birkenau camp were tattooed. I hope you enjoyed this episode of the History Guy, short snippets of forgotten history. And if you did enjoy, feed the algorithm by making a comment or clicking that like button. If you have suggestions for future episodes, please send those to our suggestions email box. Check out our webpage at thehistoryguy.net. And of course, we're on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. You can book a special message from the History Guy on Cameo and check out our merchandise at teespring.com. And if you'd like more episodes of Forgotten History, all you need to do is subscribe.